Today on Toy Shiz, the last set of Fantastic Four figures you'll ever need. Let's talk toys. Welcome back, everyone, and a very happy Thanksgiving to you all. Toy Shiz here, and we're going to be talking about all the brand new Marvel Legends retro Fantastic Four, the animated series. Today, I know a lot of you, you're probably full, right? You tripped the feigned out, you want to escape the family totally get you. So, get a nice big cup of coffee, maybe a slice of that pecan pie, key lime pie if you're extra special, and we'll kick it off right. Now, the Fantastic Four, the animated series, part of the Marvel Action Hour back in the 90s, right? You all remember that? Well, a lot less season one. These figures are more along the lines of season two when they kind of revamped the show, gave them the more Batman animated black on blue sort of style. But the Fantastic Four card art is of course gorgeous. Brought to us again by Harry Moore Design and really just evokes that animated Toy Biz retro style look that's all over the card backs, even down to the animated style look of all the Fantastic Four. There's a lot of Michigash kind of thing on this card. It's the usual, you gotta put the warning, you gotta put the Hasbro logo. I just think it's kind of like out of place, you know what I mean? Just saying, on the back side of the card, you get a little bit of a bio, you get to see, oh look, you can swap out Reed Richards' hands. But everything is just very crisp, very clean. It's a very thick card back, and you get to see all the different figures for this line, which we will be talking about. This is more of a higher price point, which works for that collector-ish sort of deal. I also like how the thing is so big, you gotta put his feet down in the bottom of the bubble of the card, right? But these unfortunately do not include Build-A-Figure pieces. And to be honest, because I know they tout, hey, buy one for display, buy one to open. I really think that they should start putting Build-A-Figure pieces in that way, it just increases that buy one display and buy one to open deal because I think more people would open it to build the build a figure. I know I would, probably wouldn't buy two sets, but you get my drift, right? A lot of people would. So you got the Fantastic Four and then you got a bunch of villains like the Psycho Man. And this one I'm very excited about because we've had Fantastic Four figures of the Yin Yang, but this is the first time we've gotten Psycho Man. And then we have the High Evolutionary who We'll get to him in just a bit, but I kind of saw him more as like an X-Men the Animated Series villain, but very stoked to get him in either case, so that's awesome. And then we have a figure that actually came out quite a bit ago. This is the retro-carded Doctor Doom. We're going to include him. I've had him all this time, and that way we can kind of contrast and compare the original Fantastic Four card, like I have with the Tuma here compared to this new Doctor Doom card. And as you can see, the four is a little bit more hologram shiny, also missing the price tag, of course. <laughs> and as seen on the Marvel Action Hour. The Marvel Action Hour was Fantastic Four and Iron Man. Um, both were interesting, I'll just say. Now, on the back side of the card, it is kind of sort of recreated in the sense of new versus old, just a lot of that really crisp artwork brings it to life and it has the usual cross cells here's the fantastic four and here is the iron man but again i think they've done a fantastic job no pun intended with this wave but we're going to check them out in detail sit back relax maybe get yourself a few sides some mashed potatoes gravy maybe make a sandwich out of it i don't know this is a look at the brand new marvel legends retro fantastic four the animated series wave one by Hasbro. And if you're not too busy calling for four while I got you guys here, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Old Toys, New Toys, Daily News Updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now we'll kick things off proper with old blue eyes here. We have Benjamin J. Grimm, AKA The Thing. And he comes with a couple pairs of hands to him, really craggy, rocky texturing, even on the face, which is really, Done nice. Now, I'll tell you this. This is not exactly my favorite head portrait, but I'm glad it's a new and different head portrait. He doesn't have any teeth. It's more of just, eh, he's going to play cards, something like that. But I do prefer the more angry type head. I think that that fits the thing better. But again, it's nice to have a good contrast. He's every bit the animated series in the sense of his blues and his white skivvies. And he's got some really nice yellowish craggy paint to him, nice highlights. It doesn't exactly go around all over the figure, but for the amount that they've given him, I think it adds a little bit of brevity, a little bit more 
texture and color and contrast to his big orange rocky disposition. So it is nice to see. He does have the usual articulation. Some of the paint can get kind of sloppy on these. I'm just going to point that out in various figures, but I'll point it out as it comes across. But you'll get the same exact articulation as the other two releases to the prior body mold for this thing. Now, not too sold on the look of this particular Fantastic Four, but I definitely dug the Walgreens version. It's nice to have all three, but if you have one of these or now all three, you really don't need any more Fantastic Four figures, am I right? And of course, it's always a fun retro shiz look back at the past when you can see the original animated series thing from Wave 1. Whereas now you have this giant Marvel Legends version of this character. And while the old Toy Biz one kind of hit the size in the animated series a bit better, this is more of a bulkier, taller, bigger thing, more modern thing. But in either case, it's still a lot of fun to see what came before and to see what's happening now. So we're going to switch things up a bit and go from hero to villain. This is the Psycho Man. It comes with his fear, doubt, hate machine. A little bit of a scuff right there on the fear logo, but it's nicely sculpted. It could have done with a little bit more paint, just painting the gizmos and the gadgets. That would have been kind of nice just to kind of bring out the detail because the Psycho Man is very nice. It's nice to have a brand new figure from Marvel Legends. He was in the previous Toy Biz, but... Just look at the detail on this guy. It is a exquisitely sculpted figure. I am quite impressed by the way this guy looks. He's got tubes and he's got that really cool metallic green paint to him over the white base. The paint kind of gets kind of sloppy in some of the highlighted areas. It's unfortunate. Maybe I can scratch that off or something to that degree. But in either case, when you look at him from afar and you don't get too caught up in the nitpicks, He's well articulated. He's got some interesting new articulation to him. So always happy to have that, right? I'm not a completely sold on the color of his face and his head. I don't really care for that particular yellow, but it works for what it is. We'll just say I'm nitpicking at this point. But I really like the articulation scheme on him. A lot of hidden articulation to it, so that's nice. Kind of blends in with the folds. He's got double-jointed knees, elbows, everything you'd expect from Marvel Legends. This is a great figure right here. And just to manipulate your nostalgic emotions a little bit more, here is the original Psycho Man. That was part of Wave 4 from Fantastic Four, the animated series. I will have a video coming up for this guy. But you can see, yeah, he's a lot more animated in his appearance, whereas this new Marvel Legends Psycho Man does kind of take more cues from the comic books. But in either sense, they both have their really good points, Kind of, sort of, odd points. Don't get all emotional over it. Either go for one or the other, or maybe just get both. Who knows? Then you got Mrs. Fantastic, or the Invisible Woman, as she's known. She comes with an Invisible Force shield we have seen before. It works. It's very cool. But I would like to see more powers from the Fantastic Four. She also comes with some fisted hands as well. Now, poor Susie here. <laughs> we'll just say... I like what they were kind of going for, but I don't think that head sculpt really fits for her. And it's not really animated series accurate if you're going to go that route as well. Perhaps if it was painted in a different way, it may look better, but it's just not great. It's the same exact body mold we've seen for the Fantastic Four Invisible Woman before. So it definitely works. Nice articulation. I like the colored blues that they're giving this this time around so it fits the animated series better. And her powers really do look good. She can create that force field and it looks great. However, again, maybe a huge bubble, something like that. That would have been really cool. Maybe something you have to kind of put together. But here you get to see all of the recent Invisible Womans from the Marvel Legends line, from the Skrull Build-A-Figure to the Walgreens line. Now, I do really like the head sculpts. They're very pretty looking. It's a very nice looking Sue Storm both for the Walgreens and for the Super Scroll Wave. I'm not too sold on the costume here, of course, but I definitely dig this old school look. These are more like the Jack Kirby type original costumes. I totally dig. And I like that she's kind of mid-phasing, mid-going invisible. I really like that. I think that kind of fits without having to have yet another figure or an all-invisible type figure, you know what I mean? So really, 
Actually, I kind of like this head sculpt better on this costume. Also because I really like this head sculpt on this costume. So that's definitely gonna be my new animated look for this figure for Sue Storm. And like always, I do appreciate Hasbro always kind of bringing the nostalgia back, going more for these animated series. But he didn't have to go this far in recreating the looks of the original. But sometimes you gotta know when to quit. You don't need to give us the full nostalgic looks all over again, am I right? Both of these are unfortunate looking. Let's just agree on that. However, it is still fun to look back on the old one and think, well, after all these years, not much has changed. Now, carrying forth with the villains, we have the high evolutionary figure. And when they announced this wave, I was like, oh, heck yeah, that's the figure I want. Next to Psycho Man, high evolutionary. He comes with a pair of fisted hands, and he also has open hands, but then nothing else, no other accessories. However, you do get a really nice looking figure and as far as I can tell he's largely a new sculpt everywhere so that's nice to see and he has really nice paint accents all the little Kirby crackle bubbles or rivets or whatever you want to call it are painted so that's really nice to see they did not skimp on that I do like his chain mail on the side down to his little dressings and his gloves and everything else the face is nicely sculpted it's very different looking and i really appreciate that nice articulation same exact as i'll say over and over articulation you would expect from a marvel legends figure however i will say that i don't know the high evolutionary we'll say in a fantastic four sense i will know him from x-men the animated series and to a degree spider-man unlimited although he looked completely different in that cartoon, but we don't have to get into it. But as I said, with X-Men the Animated Series, that's where I know the High Evolutionary the best. Like when we took a little trip to Wonder Gore with Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and Magneto, and of course he captures Wolverine, does his little manipulation to Wolverine, and ends up turning him into a giant Wolverine werewolf, which Toy Biz made a figure of. So these two figures go together quite nicely. And I love it. It's a fantastic figure. However, I will suggest, though, for a very cool accessory for the High Evolutionary, could have come with a couple different animal heads, maybe to swap out with figures, turn them into animals. I don't know. Just a thought. But in either case, you're really going to dig the High Evolutionary. Carrying forth with our Fantastic Four team, we have a awesome looking Mr. Fantastic. A bit different in the style and the look, but one that adds a little something something. It's not the usual Mr. Fantastic. He does come with interchangeable arms, so you can just do the standard blue and white animated look. I really appreciate that. I don't care for these hands for Mr. Fantastic. It's more of like, what exactly are you doing? You're just extending your fingers? Are you trying to slip under a door frame? It's just not the usual kind of powers, I would think, for Mr. Fantastic. And then you have Reed here. He's got that great look to him. Same exact head portrait we have seen before with the Walgreens versions. But I really like what they did with the coat. I like that. It's different pair of goggles that would have been really cool as an accessory just gonna say but the coat is done nice it form fits him it looks like he's in his lab doing all the sciencey things that you would expect for mr fantastic to do and it's got little buttons and pockets would have been nice to have a little paint here and there just saying but you can slip out the arms and put in a power or two if you want and you get classic animated style Reed Richards. And again, while I don't care for these powers, I mean, I'm glad they gave him something but an extendo arm, an extendo waist, a neck, something like that. That just would have been icing on the cake because these are incredibly boring, we'll just say, in terms of the powers. But you got a good council of reeds going on, right? <laughs> At least we got that going on. Again, I'll say all day, I don't care for the black on blue sort of styling. However, again, with these powers, with the Walgreens one, at least you had a little something different. And I really like these. Even though they're not really bendy-bendy because the plastic is incredibly thick. But they tried at least, so it's something. And it's much better than extendy fingers, we'll just say. And from going from, let's say, Season 1, Wave 1, Fantastic Four, to now this more Season 2, Marvel Legends... Reed Richards. It's fun to take a look back in the past with his little stretchy arms and now he's incredibly yellow because of age, but it's just sheer fun. It's great to have the old figures and new figures, especially since the really old Toy Biz accessory for Reed Richards 
totally will fit on your brand new Marvel Legends one. Now to go over Doctor Doom, I'm going to tell you this right off the bat. You get this Doctor Doom, you never need another Doctor Doom. Unless for some reason they could create a Doctor Doom figure that magically comes to life like Indian in the Cupboard or something like that. Because this one has it all. He's got two books with him, magic spell casting books right there. Then you got the Doctor Strange book as well. But yes, one's red, one's black. They've got different symbols on them, yada, yada. It's nice, but I really wish they could close. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that recent NECA Goliath figure. I really wish his book could close. <laughs> he does come with the ultimate nullifier, this time cast in black, which is a little bit different, we'll say. He's got some green spell magic. He's got some gun hands and magic casting hands and he comes with two iron man effects which i'll show you what that does in a second but this is a really nice looking dr doom nice greens nice different contrast of greens he's even got some really nice cloth goods right here with his little tunic thing going on and he also does come with a gun you simply just lift this up and he has what a luger but on the other side he's got the jet packs and you can put these little effect pieces in there and bingo bango you can get them flying around so this is a doctor doom we've seen before he's got a little bit extra cloth goods extra weapons everything in the whole shebang that we've seen with other fantastic four releases but it's still a great figure so I highly recommend him now in terms of comparison we'll just say this was my favorite doctor doom figure back in the day, and I still really like this figure. This new one takes the cake, right? But the old one, it still has its charm. It really has that really cool, like, brushed metal look to his gauntlets and his armor. It's very cool looking. Yeah, there are problems with articulation, whatever you want to say. I still like it, and I still think it's a great figure because you can also take his mask off. That's really interesting as well. This was back in the day. It blew our minds back in the day. Oh my God, you can take his mask off. It's crazy. But in either sense, like I said, this new one is definitely awesome. So awesome, in fact, when comparing him to the original Doctor Doom from Wave 1 of the Fantastic Four Toy Biz series, I mean, he doesn't have the little gimmick where his arm shoots out anymore, but the new one does come with the grabby magic casting hand. And yeah, you can recreate all those pre-posed action features, of course. Now, neither of these are exactly 100% animated accurate, but they are pretty good for what they are nonetheless. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is my ideal look for Johnny Storm. You can have him on fire, doing the whole flame on thing every day, right? But I like him just in the standard blues and the whites. So if you get yourself an extra Mr. Fantastic and you've collected all the other Fantastic Four recent figures like a crazy person, well then yeah, you can definitely make your own homemade Johnny Storm. Now, there is a Hasbro Pulse exclusive Johnny Storm coming out. He's not out just yet. But he does have those butterfly joints, different body type. We've seen it before with Spider-Mans and whatnot. I don't really care for that. I think it breaks up the costume a bit too much. This one is a lot more animated, a lot more streamlined, and I really dig the look of it. Because again, for me, I don't think of Johnny Storm being like a roided, really overly muscular type guy. I think it's more of a simplistic type body type. We'll just say, like the animated series, right? You see it right here. But I love the simplicity of it, the blues and the whites, which of course totally reminds me of the 10-inch Johnny Storm from the Toy Biz line. Now, the haircut's a little bit different, a little bit brighter yellows in the hair and all that kind of jazz, but you get to what I'm going for here, right? And the best part is, like I said, if you've collected all the other Johnny Storms, you can fit all the different pieces with them, and you can add on. You can do the back flame. You can do a flame on head. He used to do this kind of stuff all the time in the animated series, or go full on flame on, right? And that's where this new Johnny Storm on fire figure comes from in this line. He does have the black lines. He does have that updated body with the butterfly joints. He comes with a pair of fisted hands. But this is a nice looking flame on version of Johnny Storm. I like the clear plastic to it. I like the lines. It's old fashioned lines. And if you wanted to, I mean, in all honesty, you could use this guy in an invader's sense and do the Android Human Torch if you wanted to just have the other standard Johnny Human Torch. But you can see, yeah, the fire effects, they all just fit nicely. He's got some really nice articulation. You can pop this piece on and off if you want. However, I really wish it pegged in. It has a habit of falling off. Of course, it doesn't fall off now when I show you. But you can get his head looking all the way up. And the articulation helps in doing that whole flying around thing, zipping around New York City. 
So again, it's a nice looking Johnny Storm to show you kind of in comparison with the Walgreens version. The Walgreens version is a maybe, we'll say a little bit more animated series in a way, minus the four on his chest. But again, keep him as Johnny Storm Fantastic Four and make this new one as the original Android Human Torch. Now we just need Toro, right? But he looks great. And I sense you'll think you'll be really stoked because it's too great human torch figures and while there have been a ton of johnny storm slash human torch figures over the years just in looking at the animated series for toy biz a lot of inconsistencies not exactly animated series not exactly comic book it's a weird mishmash half powered depowered flame on but i do get a good laugh out of now posing these highly articulated marvel legends figures in the way toy biz was pre-posed and again if you want to diy it make your own johnny storm i highly recommend it that's what i did so you can go from standard to powers flame on because once you have all these figures together hot dang does that look good right all four really in the same type of costume. Even though Reed and Johnny kind of share the same body type, I think the head really kind of separates. It makes Johnny just look, I don't know, a little bit buffer, right, than old Reed. Reed is a little bit more slender, more of that nerdy, where Johnny could be, you know, just a little bit more fit, but he's not overly roided out. And I think that just in keeping with the aesthetics of the team, it looks great, especially when you got powers going on, right? That's when you can throw in the flame on effects for Johnny Storm. And of course, get some Invisible Woman powers going. She will also have a Hasbro Pulse exclusive invisible all clear plastic version for her. It's kind of one of those figures where I'm on the fence, to be quite honest with you. This is kind of like a retread for the original Toy Biz line with the Fantastic Four, having a powered on version, a different version of Johnny Storm, and then an all invisible Invisible Woman. It's cool, don't get me wrong, but you could kind of achieve the same sort of thing going on and still have a good looking Sue Storm. Now, something I do like to touch on, especially in my Spider-Man Retro Shiz episodes, are the guest stars. Now, you have this really gorgeous looking Fantastic Four team from the animated series, quote unquote. Well, the nice thing is, if you've been collecting these Marvel Legends figures, you would undoubtedly probably have a Namor figure, and he will fit in beautifully with that animated aesthetic. Likewise, with Thor, God of Thunder, who made several Rice Davies appearances. His voice always weirds me out. It's also like Macbeth from Gargoyles and the guy from Indiana Jones. You know who I'm talking about. Both Medusa and Black Bolt, they both have figures, of course. Now, I would like them more in terms of, let's say, their classic looks. We'll just say they fit for now. But Medusa aside, we are definitely in need of a really nice updated Black Bolt. However, I do like that screaming head version, not gonna lie. Black Panther, for the most part, I mean, with all the Black Panther figures we've had in Marvel Legends, we kind of have one that resembles one from the animated series. Likewise with Daredevil. Daredevil appearing both in Fantastic Four and Spider-Man the Animated Series. While I would say the color schematics are a little bit different here and there, it does actually work. It's pretty cool. And just in case you're like Johnny Storm and thought Ghost Rider was a rumor, you could get old Danny Ketch going. The old-fashioned Danny Ketch Marvel Legends. He is absolutely due for a new Marvel Legends figure. I'll tell you that all day, and I would welcome that, being that 2022 is the year of the Ghost Rider. So, wouldn't mind seeing lots of new Ghost Riders, to be honest with you. And, of course, the Hulk, who fought the Thing. Yeah, you can get some Hulk on Thing action going. Those are some weird words to put together. And, of course, there's a ton of more characters. You got Iron Man and Hydro Man and Vision. You know what I mean? You can keep going on and on. And, yeah, you could put Spider-Man in there. However, while I do say all day now, well, this is the last Fantastic Four I'll ever need. Hasbro, if you ever make Spider-Man the Animated Series costumes or the Fantastic Four, dag nabbit, I will have to buy that. Also, what in the heck was up with the thing in his Secret Wars Spider-Man animated episodes? My God, something stinks. But again, it's really a lot of fun to collect these things for years and years and go, yeah, you know what? This works in terms of the animated series. So that's finally going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new Hasbro's Marvel Legends Retro Fantastic Four, the animated series. 
Wave 1 figures. This is, again, as I'll reiterate, if you've collected all the different figures recently for the Fantastic Four characters, you can create quite an amazing set of toys here. They're not exactly perfect just out of the box, but you can swap hands and pieces and parts and really cobble together a fantastic, Fantastic Four set of toys. Ones that... I really don't think you'll ever need new ones. Sure, they'll have updated articulation. Maybe they'll throw in some powers here and there, but they've really done quite a great job in really capturing the essence of the Fantastic Four. I know a lot of people look at these and think, yeah, we've gotten these a dozen times. They're just repaints. But if you've missed them, if you've never collected the Fantastic Four, if you've never been a fan, maybe you just recently a fan, these will be right up your alley. The retro packaging, the artwork is gorgeous. It's a really nice collector's set of figures. However, for me, as I do like to open them, it really doesn't do much for me. I had the old ones. So in that sense, I prefer the old ones and keeping them on the cards, if anything. These new ones are meant to be opened and displayed and just look good on your shelf. We've gotten these a dozen times, right? Now I have three of each set. And prior Toy Biz ones and 3.75 inch ones. It goes on and on. So I really, truthfully, do not need any more Fantastic Four figures. Unless they make Spider-Man the Animated Series Secret Wars ones. But that's besides the point because I now have a core set of Fantastic Four figures that are great enough that when the Galactus set I ordered finally arrives, well, they can do battle together on my shelf. I know the retro line is not going to be for everyone. The cards are gorgeous. The art is gorgeous on the packaging. It brings back all the nostalgic toy biz feels. But it's not something that I need for my collection personally. But I am curious to know what you guys think about this new wave of figures. Are they for you? Will you be grabbing? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything retro Fantastic Four, the animated series. And I hope that you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Fill up on pie, coffee, turkey. Go for seconds. Hang out with your grandma. Tell her about your Fantastic Four figures. Do whatever, just have a great time doing it. And thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, as long as we don't just keep getting Mr. Fantastic and Sue and Ben and <laughs> Johnny, bring on more characters, more villains, villains especially, for the Fantastic Four franchise. Because for that, I'll definitely call for four. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.